Welcome back. Thank you for staying with the broadcast. Can any government truly combat crime? According to veteran journalist Urubuski, this is an impossible feat. He explains each individual crime committed is a matter of that individual's life. He urges the government of the day to not use crime statistics in an effort to score political points. More in this report. In terms of why I didn't think that the Kenny Anthony administration was going to solve crime, because they weren't doing these things. None of these things are going to happen by themselves. It's not about somebody just waking up one day and saying, we're not going to tolerate crime tomorrow. That's not going to resolve anything. It's the actions on the ground and giving the people the necessary resources and putting the proper processes in that resolve crime. Former NYC presidential candidate Robert Rene is coming off a fiery NYC election, but he's offering congratulatory remarks to the incoming president, Nias Alfred. However, he has suggestions to make future NYC elections more representative of youth voices around the island. The National Youth Council has welcomed a new executive board. After feverous campaigning, leading the charge will be incoming president, Nias Alfred. Former presidential candidate Robert Rene says, though the debate and other aspects of the campaign trail were rocky, himself and his team, Team Stages, accepted the defeat in stride and looked to put into practice all they have learned from the experience. He says, looking on the brighter side of things, the controversial elections revitalized youth interest in the group, which he is of the opinion will propel the new executive to carry out their duties with vigor. I really, really hope that the National Youth Council is, is a body that, that um, becomes relevant for all young people. Uh, I met some, some young persons yesterday and I was telling them about, about the whole election process and they were like, what is an NYC? Is it New York City? And I was like, no, it's not New York City, it's the National Youth Council. What is the National? And so you, you still had so many young people who didn't know. But one of the good things I saw coming out of that was the fact that... Um, people actually became more interested in the NYC because of all the media attention that the elections got. People were like, wow, you know, that, that body's still around and whatnot and whatnot. Um, and so I, I am hoping that that energy continues in that we are always on the media talking about the issues that are affecting young people. As for the way forward, Rene says the flawed election process can be greatly improved. By virtue of the fact that um, you have elections on a Saturday, it means that they will always be excluded because they can't come to the elections. So that's thousands of young people there already that's not participating in, in voting for a youth council, a national youth council um, executive. Um, so for me, one of the things, of course, uh, going moving forward, I would like to see happen is that the National Youth Council elections becomes a, a national duty for young people and have elections um, during the week where you don't affect the Seventh-day Adventists, you don't affect the um, other churches, who, the other Indian Christians who go to church on a Sunday. Um, but just like a national election, um, it becomes, like I said, national duty. So the employers would have, now have to give them the right, the, the, the time to actually go and vote um, like elections. Give them the two hours off. You have the different polling stations around the island because this National Youth Council really and truly is supposed to be a, a council that represents all. A platform of inclusivity is still one which he will advocate for with the hope the NYC will become a more all-encompassing organization. We didn't see many people from the Rastafarian community at elections. We didn't see many people from, you know, the um, uh, uh, persons with disabilities and, and that sort of thing. So we're really hoping um, that in the coming years, the National Youth Council really becomes a, a, a body that is uh, inclusive of all young, all young people. The outspoken former candidate assures his designation as president of the South Castries Youth and Sports Council means his voice will still be heard within the NYC and his duty to hold the organization accountable will be done. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalfred. Construction work on the first phase of the Castries Market Redevelopment Project is progressing as scheduled. The first phase will include a sheltered area for provisions market vendors, 
along with upgraded amenities and surface covering. Speaking on the progress, Mayor Peterson Francis says the provisions market vendors will no longer be exposed to the elements. This first phase will provide comfort and cater to all vendors in a uniformed and structured manner. No longer will the vendors require umbrellas or tents as the entire market facility will be covered. The other aspects of the market redevelopment project will include a state-of-the-art food court, high-end air-conditioned restaurants, a craft market, a box park, a viewing tower, an entertainment area, meat and fish depots, and duty-free shopping boutiques. The Ministry of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations has officially launched the Yes I Can Adult Literacy Program in the community of Miku. The four-month program is geared toward educating both youth and adults who did not complete primary or secondary schooling. The Empowerment Project Yes I Can has moved to Miku. It will see school dropouts, both young and old, undergoing literacy training. The aim is to empower rural communities by ensuring that skills training are accessible to all, particularly in the critical area of reading and writing. Acting Director of Innovation within the Department of Education, Linnell Malzair, said the program is in keeping with the government of St. Lucia's vision to make illiteracy in St. Lucia a thing of the past. This program teaches persons who have never been able to read or write, or they may have at some point been able to read or write and have forgotten along the way. This program is very important for us as a nation as we move towards our vision in 2030 to eradicate illiteracy on our island and to keep in tune with the trends around the world to give persons that empowerment and that confidence of being able to chart their own path. She noted that with every person who learns to read and write, it is one less burden on the state. Participants in the Yes I Can program were presented with starter packs at the launching of the initiative. The government of St. Lucia makes that investment in you, not just to give you things, but to give you something to say that we are committed just as you are committed. Because you can come every day for these four months, four days a week to the classes to help yourself, we are committing to you with whatever little that we have. So you will all be receiving a starter kit with your caps so that if it's the sun is out in the afternoon, so you will have your cap to protect you, you'll have your t-shirt, you have your materials. Your materials will comprise of your workbook, your exercise book, your pencil, your pen, and your sharpener eraser set. This will allow you to do everything that you need to do within the four months. The participants will also be interfacing with technology. Two participants indicated their eagerness to begin the learning process. I'm doing small business and I need to know more so that I could handle my business more. In life is success. And if you're not success, you're down in the drain. So when I heard about it, I was late, but I request somebody to do it for me, and then they said I could come in today. So that is why I'm here, so I could learn more, and I could help myself more in life. I'm here to but I'm going to I'm to I'm to I'm I'm going to I'm I'm going to the program commenced on the 6th of August and will culminate in November. The pilot program was first introduced in canneries and according to the Innovation Division of the Ministry, it has yielded much success. In 2015, St. Lucia recorded a 2.2% dropout rate. This is cause for concern as many dropouts remain ill-equipped to join the workforce. The Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education Care has long taken initiative to enhance the lives of many students by allowing second chance education and technical training. The Ministry of Education has taken heed. Dr. Gail Rigobert spoke to plans to work with CARE at a press briefing earlier this week. We would have announced earlier this year that the Ministry um, is making a concerted effort to cater for those students who did not perform satisfactorily at the common entrance exam and to encourage parents and students to consider having those students pursue a program at CARE. 
uh, let me uh, thank Dr. Mason and her team. That process is very advanced now. You know my motto, engage, 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 consult, consult, consult. I'm happy to say that up until last week, um, we were able to engage with stakeholders. Uh, some of the parents were engaged last week along with Dr. Mason, and we are happy indeed that parents are open to the idea of having their children pursue the care program, which you know um, is very well received by our stakeholders. The program is currently in its pilot stage and is being developed to provide an avenue for students who require assistance. You're watching the Hot 7 Nightly News. Stay with us. There's more news after the break.